and then you have a whole bunch of lumber that you've chopped up that is too short for anything. Good morning, beautiful people. It is day two with building an end wall for our high tunnel. I made pretty good progress yesterday. Just ran out of time. But not having to run to Lowe's and get everything I needed today really speeds up the whole process. It's like still actually morning, so I have all day to work on this. I'm gonna see if I can get it all done, get, get the opening framed for our vent that we haven't ordered yet, and then possibly build a door. It'd be kind of nice if I could get a door built. If you watched yesterday's video, this is what I started. So if you haven't seen it, go back and watch that video. And you, Millie, yeah, you should feel guilty. She comes over here and wants to sit up here where my camera's at, and she rubs on it and tries to knock it over. You're not safe around cameras, cat. bulk of the framing is done got my opening for the window and yeah your eyes aren't deceiving you it is a little off center somewhere messed up my measurements <laughs> last time i used a plumb line i was real careful about how i did it honestly it's not that big of a deal we just need an in wall i can deal with the you know six eight inches that it's off like it's not like it's got an inspection coming the inspection will be when meg comes out and goes hey that looks nice all right i'm gonna put all my cross bracing in it's basically just just stiffeners to uh, put furring strips on to hold the plastic on. I did furring strips on that end and we have not had a single problem and we've had some pretty strong windstorms. The last windstorm we had, I had all kinds of stuff sitting on the plastic in here to keep the plastic down. It blew so hard, it flipped all of my potted plants. I had some lumber in here. I had that screen, my compost sifter, everything just got overturned and thrown out here. There was so much wind. All right, Buggy, what are we doing today? Canning some chicken. Canning some chicken, it's turkey. Canning some turkey. <laughs> so I am working on the turkey that I did last week. Bone. Still working on it. Yeah, a big bone. That is a big bone. That was a big turkey, huh? So I am still working on the turkey. It's almost done. This is the wings and the legs that were left. And so people ask me very frequently, how do you get it all done? I don't get it all done all the time. It's definitely an ebb and flow. Sometimes we're just super, super busy with other stuff. And so your turkey sits in the fridge for almost a week until you get the chance to actually get to can it <laughs> because it does take time. Like it's a lot of hands off time, but you have to be around the canner to like make sure everything's going like it's supposed to. So we have the time today and we're gonna work on this to get it canned and hopefully be done with this project finally. <laughs> Big yes, they are. We need to feed them to the chickens. No, we'll feed those to the pigs. Oh. They like them. Look, a big Ooh, one. That big is one. a big one. It's big enough as me. This is the bone. These are the bones. We need to feed them to the pigs. Mm-hmm. Because then we will eat them. Yes. All right, I gotta go down into the bottom of the barn and rip these in half. Hopefully all my measurements are right and I'm not ripping stuff pointlessly. 
I've done that before. You measure the wrong thing or cut the wrong thing, and then you have a whole bunch of lumber that you've chopped up that is too short for anything. Uh, adopt the rule, measure twice, cut once, not cut it twice and it's still too short. I still haven't moved my table saw back up top. It's been kind of nice having it all open and clean up there, so I've just left it. But because it's down here, I don't have any room to put a whole piece and rip it. So that was why I cut my stuff down shorter. I'll bring it down here and rip it. Let me plug this sucker in. I'm going to get ripping. All right, got it all ripped. I'm going to go uh, finalize the cuts. Some of these will have angles on them. Some of them will be nice and straight. Framing is complete. Um, I gotta go cut a whole bunch of furring strips, like a whole bunch. Actually, before I cut furring strips, I'm gonna make my door, make sure I have enough wood. Although, I've got enough wood lying around here and there, I could probably make a door out of whatever. So, I'll do that and then uh, start doing furring strips and everything else. Cool, it's moving right along. Bring you guys inside, it's raining. Come in here and get some lunch. Meg is cooking all the things today. It's like everybody is getting some screen time. <laughs> you must have been desperate for quiet. No, they finished their math and they asked if they could play Plants vs. Zombies. Plants vs. Zombies, I like. I can't watch that game because I'll want to play it. That's yes. a really, really it's fun game. It's so, uh, what you got going on, lady? Mac and cheese. So this is like special mac and cheese. I guess. This is very special mac and cheese. After growing up with box mac and cheese, uh, yeah, this yeah. is your sister's recipe? Yeah. She made it for us one time. It was like, we've been doing mac and cheese wrong. Like from a box, like it's all right. Yeah, but it's all right. This one, you boil the pasta in milk. In the milk, yeah. So the starch from the pasta thickens the milk and it gets all creamy. And then you add your cheese, right. which is like, it. It's, it's probably gonna be all that cheese right no, there. No, it's not all that. It's a lot of cheese that goes into mac and cheese like this, and then it's all melty and ooey gooey and delicious. It's really good. Yeah. So, yeah, good lunch today. I know. I was like gonna come in and have like a sandwich or something, but. Mac and cheese. All right. That's where it's at. That'll work. <laughs> That's so much cheese and the milk and everything. Like, goodness. Measure with your heart. I don't think people understand what that means coming from this girl. <laughs> I, have n I had never seen anybody who used so much butter and so much cheese when she cooks something. Um, like, a stick of butter growing up would last like, you know, about a better part of a week. A stick of butter is a meal for this, this like, lady over here. I don't actually here. eat it with like a fork and a knife, but I mean... No, but when you're putting a quarter stick of butter on a piece of bread, I mean, it's tasty. Life's too short. Life's too short to worry about butter. That's right. That's why we have a cow. Measure from the heart. <laughs> Except I don't make, she doesn't make enough cream. That's why we butter. have a cow. We, is that why? We would have to get like two more cows to make enough butter and cheese and milk and everything. Yeah. To support our, our needs. You want a little bit? Can you some? Got it? Eat it. <laughs> You're a mess. <laughs> I am muchly ready for some ooey gooey okay. mac and cheese. Well there you go. <sighs> that was a good lunch. It's all carbs though. I told Meg after all that 
carb loading, I'm gonna come down here to the greenhouse and close the doors and take a nap. While I was sitting there, I realized I made a mistake. Uh, how I was planning on doing the door, I think I measured the wrong thing. So I'm gonna go over here and remeasure. I already cut some wood, but uh, yeah, I'll find out right quick. I think it's still savable. That's usually what I do. I'll sit down and I start thinking about what I'm working on and if I made a mistake it usually pops into my head and it's like, wait a minute. I know what I measured when I wrote down my measurements for the door. I'm pretty sure I measured the wrong thing and I did. I measured the inside of the door jam, not where the door is going to sit. Anyways, I got to cut a couple more pieces and get those recut and catch right back up. have it. This particular batch of uh, pressure treated wood that I used, yeah, the boys have walked over and grabbed a piece for me and they're like, good night. It feels like it's soaking wet. Like it's just wet. Super heavy. So right now this door is like, don't put your fingers in the way. This is a finger smasher. Not that we're really going to be going out this door. It's big enough for a wheelbarrow or the wagon, but that's the side we work on. This is just kind of it would just be nice to not have to walk all the way around or open a side. But yeah, this door's really heavy. I imagine in a few months, probably by the end of summer, it will warp and twist and not fit anymore. But the wood will be a lot lighter. It'll be more like a greenhouse door should be. I had two hinges that were the same size, not the same type, but the uh, measurements were the same. Hey, sister, what are you doing? You're running like a crazy person. Can you come through the door? That's not the door. Right here. Hey, look. Right in the middle. Yeah, that. Keep going. Okay, push it. Push it. There you go. What do you think of the door? It's nice. It's nice. Watch your fingers. What is this one? That's the wall. Do you approve? <laughs> okay, good. My job is complete. The two-year-old thinks it's awesome, so... It's good enough for me. Why, it to rain too Why is it supposed to rain? You know your pants are inside out and backwards? Because that's what you do. Like, if they get dirty, just turn them inside out. If they're dirty on the front, turn them around backwards. Like, you're good for days using that method. All right, I guess I get to go cut furring strips for the next two hours. I'm probably not taking the camera with me. I'm just gonna go down in the barn and cut until I have a nice pile of furring strips. Cut about a thousand furring strips, not really. It's probably still not enough furring strips. But coming out here, uh, I inset the vent a little bit. I just, I wanted to try it. And I realized I'm gonna have kind of a fit putting furring strips on that. Yeah, so I think I'm going to uh, put the plastic on, see if that's gonna work. If it's not, I guess I gotta add some, some wood up there where the vent is, or just shift everything. I could shift everything out and make it all the same. Yeah, I might do that. Oh well. All right.
All right, did not get as far as I was hoping to get, but thank you, that part was a pain in the neck. <laughs> So I'm trying it different than I did the other side. The other side, I just left the whole thing long. I trimmed it on the on the ground and then put my fern strips. And it was kind of a pain in the butt, like it really was. This way, I cut it about a foot long, folded it back, pulled the, the little wiggle wire. There's a C channel with this. That, <laughs> there it is. This is called wiggle wire. It's a uh, spring steel. And like, it's really hard stuff, but you put it in that C channel and it kind of like holds the plastic down and then you just wiggle it back and forth and work it into that channel. And well, here, I'll show you. And it holds the plastic in really, really well. Like really cool system, I really liked it. And please pardon the singing toddler. She's in a great mood <laughs> and she's singing at the top of her lungs. So about farms and stuff. I think she's absconded with several of my uh, farming strips, <laughs> but that's has. all good. So anyways, the uh, wiggle wire holds the plastic in and you can do multiple layers of plastic. So folded back the, uh, the top one, tucked my door, I guess, my end wall, and then brought the top piece back and put the wiggle wire and held them both in place and it's gonna work. Yeah. And then my furring strips will go over the top of that and I'll trim that extra bit off at the furring strip. And if I ever have a problem, I can pop off the furring strip. Yeah, pop yeah. off the furring cool. strip. So I've still gotta get this all attached, but I'm running out of daylight. Yeah. I'm running out of energy too. <laughs> yeah. I, do you know where my mojo went? I seem to have lost it somewhere. Yeah. Sounds like you did too. I, yeah. I, tired of canning turkey? Yes. That was the last batch, thankfully. But it was just like, put that last batch in and I was like, okay, now what do I do? It's just uh, one of those days. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. All right. Let's go eat some dinner. Right. What is this goodness? <laughs> did you do twice baked sweet potatoes? Okay. Yes. Ooh, I bet you this is good. I hope so. It's got that barbecue chicken that I made the other night. We had talked about doing twice baked sweet potatoes. Yeah. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Sweet potatoes don't crisp quite like a potato no, will. No, they don't. This one, we lost our mojo. She we stole it, that's stole. what happened. She, she has, all all like, she is so just like jazzed. Yeah. The weather's beautiful, it like it's not real cold been warm and sunny all day like love and life I understand yes her her amount of energy yes. <laughs> wish I had some of my own but. right okay twice baked sweet potatoes all right. good. I'm trying to think smashed potatoes you remember those those yeah. were real big a few years ago yeah you boil them, them. Yeah. yeah, you boil them, Yay. and then smash them, pour oil on them, salt and pepper, and yeah. then basically fry them. Ooh. Or bake them, you bake them again, yeah. I bet you you could do something like that with a sweet potato. Yeah. And try to get some crisp on it. Yeah. I think that's the, the only hard thing is like, there's no crispy bits on them. So anyways, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, given that we can grow sweet potatoes quite well, mm -hmm. um, that's probably something we should adopt. Yeah. I think next time I'll do like a bacon, like a normal like bacon and bacon broccoli and cheese, cheese and, and, ooh, stuff. Broccoli. Try that. That Some would be good. Though. Yeah. We could literally do that with every ingredient as ours. Yeah. That's cool. Isn't that cool? All right, that's gonna do it for us for today. Don't escape, sister. Hey. It's really dark. Yes, it's really dark. You don't need to go outside right now. Before the baby escapes, <laughs> I need to set the camera down. So, we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.